Well, hey everyone, in this video, what I wanna do is I just wanna walk you through what a community group is and sort of define it for us. Uh, what is a community group? What are you being a part of? And as a pastor, uh, man, at Redemption Church, I just love to see disciples being made. Pursuing and proclaiming Jesus, it's broken down into the heart of God of just loving him and loving people and making disciples. And that's what community group is all about. And what I want to do is just reveal uh, to you sort of the ministry of philosophy of a community group and to equip you you all to make disciples as you love God and love one another in this process. And so whether this is your first time being a part of a community group or you've been in multiple community group meetings and groups uh, over the years, this is so important for us to be on the same page and to be unified and say, hey, what are we joining? What are we a part of? Uh, because community seems to be a buzzword, a popular word in our uh, culture right now. Um, you know, we, we find community off of so many different things, common interests like sports, politics. Um, man, you could find community off of weird, random hobbies. But when I mean our community groups and define what we find our community or center our groups around, it's the gospel. I almost like to define our community groups as their gospel centered community groups. We want to live our lives centered on the gospel and the implications of God's word and his truth in our everyday life. And so we want to make disciples and do this together. And our greatest common interest as a people, uh, especially the people of God, is Jesus himself and this message of the gospel that Jesus came according to scripture. He died according to scripture and he rose according to scripture. This is huge. This should center our lives and take our entire lives to be played out because the implications are incredible. And because of the gospel, we're to live differently uh, because God is our father. Man, Jesus is our savior and Lord and the spirit, he empowers us to live for God. And so what this all boils down to is discipleship, discipleship. Uh, we say at Redemption Church, the primary way that we disciple people is through community. It's through community. You see, on a Sunday service, we we publicly praise God, right, through singing, through worship uh, and fellowship and those things and proclaim uh, God's word. That's the focus. We believe that this is so important for you to regularly gather as God's people with God's people for these spiritual disciplines. But we also believe it's so important to gather outside of just a public service and to work on and live for Jesus in your private your private life, your everyday life, uh, the practice being the other spiritual disciplines of our faith, like fellowship and prayer and, and living in community, uh, practicing loving one another is so important for our faith. And community groups is a way to do that. It's a, it's a means of God's grace for your life. So in, in community groups, we focus on applying God's word and cultivating the private and public life uh, of devotion towards God. And you see, sometimes we think just community groups are just a service, but it's not an either or, it's a both and. Uh, we need to be discipling one another and, and help uh, holding each other accountable and loving one another. And I truly believe that we grow through a loving accountability. And we grow through a loving accountability. And uh, as you regularly attend a community group, you'll be asked this question over and over and over again. At least I hope the community group leaders will ask this to you. What is Jesus teaching you? How is he speaking? What, what is Jesus teaching you uh, uh, in your life? Now we ask this question on purpose because we want you listening to Jesus. We want you listening to your Lord and Savior, right? And as we regularly ask you this, the hope is that you'll start to realize, oh, wow, they're going to ask that question again. I better get get to it. And, and what is God teaching me? How is he speaking me? Am I seeking him? Am I pursuing him? Because that's, again, the mission of our church, to pursue Jesus. And so we want to be able to not only pursue Jesus, but then also proclaim that and share that in groups and in a circle, in community. We also will ask you this, not just what is Jesus teaching you or sharing with you as you're hearing from his word, as you're listening to messages, you're in fellowship, as you're, man, experiencing uh, the relationship with God that through the gospel, but how can you apply Jesus's teaching to your life? I think we all need 
loving accountability and through community, through community group leaders and one another, we can ask this regularly. Hey, what is Jesus teaching you? How do we apply this? Hey, I know that um, you said that you learned this, this, and this from the message, but what does that mean for us today as a, as a fellowship, as a community in your life? Man, these questions are so important. We not only want to be hearers of God's word, like the Bible says, but be doers of God's word. For Jesus said, that's where the blessing is. And so we want to specifically help you to process and to practice your faith, to process and practice your faith because we grow through this type of loving accountability. Another aspect of every community group uh, meeting that we have is prayer. Uh, We want to be a people that ask God for help in our discipleship and in our life. So you know what we do? We pray together. This should be a regular practice. Uh, Sometimes we'll start the meeting off with a short prayer. Other times there'll be longer prayers. Uh, We want to grow in this area and we can do so through community. You see, when we get together, everyone doesn't need to pray, but every group should be praying. And so as some are of you more comfortable praying, uh, others that may not be are learning to grow in prayer. They could bring their request and you could pray for them and you could pray for one another. This is a very helpful way and a good way to grow and even learn in prayer is doing through community. And so we want to take time to grow in it. It's a loving way, accountability through community. You see, we're growing and we don't have it all together. You and I, we need other people to show us our blind spots, to help us uh, to to help us continue to focus on Jesus. And we can disciple one another as we gather. And we really need your perspective, your wisdom, right? Wisdom is knowledge applied. We need uh, you to help process uh, what scripture says into one another's lives. And so don't be afraid to ask questions in community group. This is another means or practice that we do in community groups. Just like, hey, does anyone have any questions? Participate, discuss, share scripture, share the wisdom that you've learned as you've walked with the Lord. Uh, Are you struggling? How do you study the Bible? What does that look like in your life? Like we want to hear from you because we want you to make disciples. And so we want you to be engaged in community groups, to process. I, I talk a lot. Listen, I'm even making this video I'm talking, but you guys need to talk. You need to pour into one another. You need to to be able to ask the questions and and share the wisdom. You see, on on Sundays, we uh, we gather for the public preaching of God's word, but Uh, throughout the week, we need to process it. We need to practice it. We need to apply it. So this is the role of you as a community group, uh, in a community group. And the community group leaders, their role is not primarily teaching, but it's actually facilitating, shepherding, loving and caring for people that are in the group to point them to Christ in this way. And so, man, Bible studies, teaching, scripture, it's all good. I do this on Sundays for a long time, as you guys know. I do this uh, once a week on live YouTube videos. But a community group leader, he wants to help you apply the scripture. And we need application. We need to apply it. Questions to help facilitate this process. And so their role is not primarily teaching, but facilitating, leading, loving, caring. It's a beautiful process that we all can do together. This is why we regularly say these community groups aren't Bible studies. Don't freak out. Don't worry. But we we really do. We really do mean that. We love the Bible at Redemption Church. I hope you know that by now as we teach expository teachings, verse by verse, precept by precept, chapter by chapter, like we love God's word. It's our final authority, we say. But we're called in community to actually live life together and to live out God's word together. We, we want to practice the law of the Lord. And so Proverbs, Proverbs uh, tells us that as iron sharpens iron, so one another, we will sharpen one another. But this actually means that sparks will fly. As we're sharpening one another, as we're submitting ourselves under the word of the Lord and rebuking and correcting and speaking truth and love and, and actually just living life together, there's going to be some sparks that fly. And I want you to know this. I want you to know this up right now, up front. You guys are all weird. I'm just saying, okay, we're imperfect people and we're different and you don't even know that you're weird because that's who you are. But when you get yourself around another person or another human being, you realize, man, I'm sort of quirky. I don't, I don't have it all together. This is why marriage is so helpful and sanctifying process. Like I didn't know that I smacked that loud until I had 
a wife. Or I didn't know I did some weird things. You guys all know my goofiness and how I speak with a little southern draw. But I mispronounce words all the time and I don't even realize it. I, I need other people to come and, and share. And sometimes it could be hard. Sometimes sparks could fly. But I, I improve. I get better because of these things. And this is the idea. You see, we, we all don't have the same political views. You realize that, right? We, we want Republicans and Democrats in our church and saved. We, we all have different hobbies or even marital statuses. Some are single, some are married. Um, even economic status. There's different groups, cultures, people that may seem weird to us, but the reality is we're all weird. We're all imperfect. We all have our own preferences and we want to submit and have our identity under God and his authority and his word. We are centered around the gospel, not our weird preferences, not our just personalities, not even under me, the pastor of the church. This is about God and centering our lives. And what does it really mean to live according to the gospel, to center our lives on this eternal truth? Hobbies come and go. Even marital status comes and goes like there are things in our life that are so good and foundational, but they go up and they go down. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. We want to help you grow in your faith, in your identity with God through the gospel. So here are some implications of how we do this. You see, because of the gospel, the Bible says that God, well, God is our father. God is our father through the gospel. God is our father. So that means that we are family. We're family. Some of you guys, old school people may know, like you hear churches like, hey, brother, hey, sister. It's an actual language that applies this truth that we are actually adopted by God the Father and now are brothers and sisters in Christ. So the question we have to ask ourselves as a community, as followers of Jesus, as those that redeemed that are saved, what does this practically look like for us? How do we live as family? Well, it definitely means we're to love one another, right? Like your family always has your back. You're to love one another. And, and we want to cultivate that in community group. We want you all to walk in love. We have many verses that we're going to be praying through and talking about and thinking about how do we apply these scriptures to, to care, to love for one another, to, to not gossip, to serve, to, to bless, to be generous to one another. Man, the implications are great. And so oftentimes in community group, we say benevolence comes through community. We want you guys to meet real needs in real people's lives. As you're rolling with one another and in a season of this community group, what does it practically look like to like love people, to care for them, to be family? Especially as the holidays come up, maybe you have a holiday meal with some of your family. How do you practice that? Because, because family, if we're family, we have to learn to love one another. And so as community group leaders, we want to steer you to love one another, to serve. And this is why we don't have just singles or just married people or maybe a senior ministry or those type of things. No, this is why we put all of the family of God together. We purposely mix our groups up with men and women to get both perspective, married and single, young and old, because we're investing in one another like a family. Singles need to learn what marriage, godly marriage looks like through couples and godly married couples need to be around single people uh, or maybe kids, uh, people with kids and people not with kids. Like whatever the case, we need one another to learn to love one another. We're family. So that's going to be, that's going to be steering towards you. That's what we want you to do. We want you to love one another. And we want you to answer the question, how can I love this family that God has placed me in? He's placed you in our church. He's placed you in this community. What does it look like? Well, through the gospel, God is not only our father, but Jesus, well, he's our, our Lord and savior. And there are great implications to this truth as well. Think about it. Jesus is Lord. It means King. He's the master. We want to do what he says. We want to obey him because he is a good God and his word is true. And so this is why we say God's word is our final authority, not our preference or our opinions. It's what he says. Now, you can only imagine the differences that are in these groups and the community groups as they come and they go. People come and go in our lives and we want to do our best to disciple them and to serve them, not conform them to our image, but to conform them like Christ. And we are Jesus people. And so we want to come under Jesus's authority. And that's scripture. That's his word. You see, 
don't freak out when I say community groups aren't a Bible study. We are Bible people. We love God's word. We want to focus on God's word in everything that we do. And so we want to be pointing to people through uh, two people to Jesus with one another through his word, through scripture, sharpening one another, even going so far as rebuking or correcting with God's word. But we have to do this in, in love. The Bible says, speak truth and love. Jesus is not only Lord, but he's savior. So because Jesus is not only Lord, but savior, meaning he serves us, he loves us. We love because he first loved us, right? We're responding. This is worship to us. So we want to be loving servants to one another. As we're loving one another and serving one another, we're, we're not trying to hurt people and just the, my ways, my way or the highway. No, we want to all come under his authority. So what does it look like for you to serve people as Jesus has served you? Remember when he washed the disciples' feet, he said, I'm doing this as an example so that you will love one another. What does it look like for you to serve, for you to care for, for you to not just leadership, not just community group leaders, but you're a part of a community group now. We're centering our lives around Jesus and the gospel and God's our father and Jesus is our Lord and savior. And Jesus is the greatest servant. And the Bible says we're to have the mind of Christ now to love one another, to practice these things. This is so important why we need community because we need to die to ourselves and give over to the Lord of the things he's called us to do to love other people. Again, Jesus is Lord, he's savior, God is our father, but also, and lastly, through the gospel, the Holy Spirit empowers us to do this. You see, even in these biblical truths, we can go and jump ahead and get in the flesh, but we want to live spirit-filled lives. We want to be led by the spirit. The Bible says that we aren't left as orphans, but Jesus, he actually promised the Holy Spirit to empower us to walk in our identity. Like the Holy Spirit is poured into our hearts so that we can love others, Romans 5, 5 tells us. And so the Holy Spirit empowers us and fills us to accomplish his great mission. This is why we do pray together in community. This is why we ask for the Spirit's help to empower us to love, to serve, to grow. It's the work of the Spirit, not our flesh. We want to depend on the Spirit. We want to be spirit led. And so as we gather uh, in, in a certain format, maybe we want to be sensitive to the spirit. What is he teaching us? What is he going to do that night? But God is always our focus. And so the spirit empowers us to be on mission. Remember, God fills us with his spirit, not just so that we would have power to do whatever we want, but to a power to have power to a purpose to accomplish God's purposes on here on earth. So what does it look like? for us to be spirit-filled missionaries. If we have the spirit of God, Jesus said, just as the father sent me, I send you. And we have the spirit to empower us to do this mission. What does it look like to be a spirit-filled missionary in community right now here, part of this community group, part of this local church? How do we practice this together? A few thoughts come to my mind. Uh, first, we have to understand and proclaim the gospel to others right? This is a part of our community group process of our faith of evangelism of growing in the gospel. It's important to not only know the gospel, to apply it to our hearts, but then to proclaim it to the world. We're pursuing and proclaiming Jesus. Now, one of the ways that we do this is by having you all share your testimony of how God has impacted your life through the gospel. This is a big important part of what we do when we gather as community groups, right? We hear one another's stories. The Bible says that we are to be witnesses of God and his goodness and to proclaim it. And we want to proclaim that gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ in our lives to the world. But we also want to practice in our faith to one another and proclaim Jesus to one another and share the stories that he's done and is doing in our lives. This is why it's important for you to share, for you to discuss, for you to have designated time to process and to pray with other people and to proclaim the goodness of God of how he's moving in your lives. But it's also valuable to share your story with one another, to get to know one another. Who, who are you serving? Who is a part of your family? How are you witnessing God's goodness in the presence and life of people that he has placed you in? God transforms our lives. And so you should be encouraged by how the spirit is moving in one another's lives and processing that, praising God for that and sharing those stories with one another. 
And so we have people share their stories. We say you can share as much or as little as you like. We give you 15, 20, 30 minutes to just share whatever you want. Maybe for some of you, it's five minutes. Maybe for some of you, you have bullet points. You write things out. Maybe you do it freestyle. But we want to get to know you. We want to get to know how God is moving in your life. What have been the implications and impact of the gospel in your life? And this it's so encouraging. I love it. I love being able to switch community groups and have people go and hear one another's stories and the bond that it brings. It's so beautiful. It's powerful because, you know, if we're missionaries, spirit-filled missionaries, we want also to be inviting other people to hear our story. And so we start with one another, but we, we actually invite people to come to community groups, to come to services, to hear the gospel, to hear how the spirit is moving in our lives and the truth of the gospel so that people can get saved. We want people to be invited to come and join our fellowship. You realize that, right? Like we don't want this group to just be this group forever. We want actually it to grow, to make disciples, to minister to one another, but then to go out and have their, our our, uh, our ministry flow from the overflow of our hearts outside of just our four walls, or our homes, or our church services. We want other people to know Jesus. This is a very, very important part of our mission as a church and as Christians. We want you to know that you are called to preach the gospel and you are empowered by the spirit to do so. See, I want you to understand, never assume that people that come to our church services or our community groups are saved because we have an, a culture of inviting others. We want people that are far from God to, to see how the spirit works. You know, Jesus said, they'll know uh, your disciples with your love for one another. It will be a great witness and testimony as we have people in our culture, especially in Florida, where there's not a lot of family and we invite them into our church family. They love that, but they need to hear the gospel. So we're sharing our story. We're sharing how Jesus is alive and many people get saved because they actually see and hear how God is moving in real people's lives. Like their need to be hearing, they need to be hearing us, God's people repenting. Oh man, I blew it. I mean, I'm so sorry. Listen guys, I just want to let you guys know I gossip about this person or I blew it in here. I need your forgiveness. Like when non-believers see sinners saved by grace, it impacts and transforms lives. And this is our one of our strategies to just invite people to be a part of our life. Hey, be a part of our community group. Hear how God's working. Hear how he's speaking. Hear what the Bible says. Ask questions. We want to be uh, witnesses for Jesus in this world. And we can do this together as we're just living life together, regularly gathering in these meetings. So as we're living life together and practically loving one another, it's a powerful witness. And we want others, especially non-believers, to be a part of this, to know and to hear and to come and see. I mean, just the fact that we are all in the same fellowship together, frankly, is just a miracle. We're all so different. And sometimes I look around sometimes in my community group and the community groups I've been in and been like, man, I, I wouldn't even be friends or even know this person if it wasn't for the Lord. It's a beautiful testimony because we not only want to be inviting, but lastly, if we're missionaries, we're sent people. We want to go. Go, therefore, make disciples. Wherever you're doing, listen, you may feel sometimes that community group meetings are a big announcement because I want my community group leaders, the leaders in our church, to keep on announcing what's happening. Hey, there's this outreach. There's this opportunity. You can serve in this way. They're going to be sharing announcements for you to practice serving the Lord, serving other people, engaging in these things, to go and do stuff. We need to be going and going out to people. And so ministry is where we get equipped by our leaders, taught the word of God, filled with the spirit to go and minister out into the world. And so we want to have an equipping focus where you guys can be filled and be encouraged. So that way ministry is an overflow. So as you're going out in the world and in your workplace and your family life community, you are actually just, man, overflowed and equipped to just share the love of Jesus and be on mission as the Lord sends you. So we want you to know, we want you to proclaim the gospel. We want you to live it out in community, to invite others to join you to do this as well. And we want you to, man, Go into the world with this gospel, this good news. This, man, this is what community group is all about. Centering our lives on the truth of the gospel as we live for God in this world today, as we live in community. So 
The Bible tells us, the gospel says that God is our father. So we're family. What, what does that look like for us? The gospel says that, that Jesus now is our Lord and our savior. So we're servants receiving his love, but submitting to under his authority and applying the word of God into this life with one another, loving God and loving others. But we don't love just on our own strength. No, the Holy Spirit empowers us. And so we're spirit-led missionaries to be able to do the works that God predestined us to do. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy and for your wisdom and how you bring us into reconciliation with, um, man, God, but also with one another. And so I know that this is a lot. I do. And that's okay. I know it's a lot and that's okay. Because now you're going to have to practice these things. Now your community group leaders are going to guide discussion. And in this season, learn the stories and, and share the, uh, the truth with one another and have the conflict and reconcile and forgive and love. And this is all a part of the process. This is so glorious. It's our discipleship making, and we're going to grow from this experience. And this is why I'm so happy and glad that you are a part of a community group. The great thing is, is you don't have to grow on your own. We can live life together. We can actually serve one another and help one another grow. And so just make a commitment right off the bat to be participating in one another's lives. Send texts throughout the week. Get together, not only in a meeting, but on a service or before service or, or man, during the week, you may have relationship and get together even more with other people. Like all of this is a part of our life and our faith and what we want to practice as a church. Our primary way of discipleship is through community. And we're so glad that you're a part of this community. So hopefully as you watch this, with your community or maybe uh, as your community group leader sent this via a, a text or something um, because you missed the community group meeting, I would love for you to process this by just sharing and thinking about how has community group, uh, how has community helped you grow as a disciple of Jesus? Maybe not even just community group, maybe just take a step back. Like how has being a part of community helped your relationship with Jesus? And then for those that have been a part of a community group, could you do something special? Could you share, share specific stories of how being a part of a community group has both challenged you, right? Because there are challenges. Maybe, maybe you didn't want to be in a certain group with a certain person, or maybe it was inconvenient to, to commit every single week, or maybe you had to learn to beginning just to open up and learn how to pray in front of people. That's been a hard challenge for some. There are challenges of being part of community, but can you also, by God's grace and his wisdom, share how being a part of community, although there's challenges, there's been blessings. Like what has God done in your life, specifically those that have been a part of a community group or Redemption Church, how have you grown spiritually because of community? Share those stories. Start off strong. Man, I'm so glad how God is working in our midst. And I just want to let you know as your pastor, I'm praying for you. And I'm so excited in this season that we have all these community groups and our focus is on discipleship. Our mission is to pursue and to proclaim Jesus. And we want to do this together. I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to hearing all the stories and the discussions and the fruit of being unified under this vision, this ministry of philosophy. The Bible says that when brothers and sisters are uh, in unity, the Lord commands a blessing. So may the Lord bless you and bless this time as we gather together, centering our lives on the gospel.